Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm so excited to introduce to you Stephanie Gray, and she is all about integrative health and hormone clinic, and you live in Iowa, correct? Yeah, Midwest. Okay. Yeah, so she's got a practice there, but can also do a lot of stuff online. So uh, Stephanie, tell listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got started in this field. Sure. Well, I was, like you mentioned, born and raised in the Midwest. I grew up in what I consider to be a pretty healthy family. I always went to the chiropractor and took our supplements and ate very healthy. Um, we're always involved in physical activity. And I kind of was thinking, maybe I want to become a doctor, but my parents never took me to the doctor because we were trying to avoid, <laughs> avoid that. We were always trying to stay healthy. And so I considered going to chiropractic school, but um, long story short, I ended up going through nursing school instead and became a nurse practitioner. And knew that I didn't want to be heavily prescribing drugs, but I wanted the opportunity to take patients off drugs. And I knew if I went to chiropractic school, some of my best friends are chiropractors, but I wouldn't be able to manage medications. And so becoming a nurse practitioner then allowed me to have the the rights to prescribe drugs and to take patients off drugs, but yet I could still integrate or combine conventional medicine with natural medicine. So I pursued an anti-aging fellowship and got a master's in nutritional metabolic um, nutrition. so I could help patients uh, maintain their health and take them off medications if needed. Awesome. So today's title is how to balance your hormones and thyroid for optimal weight loss. So I want you to talk about some of the people that you've seen that you've been able to help with their weight loss journey and some of the biggest problems that you're seeing with people right now and how you've been able to help them. Sure. So when we think of hormones and how hormones can relate to weight management, there are kind of three different categories. And I go over this very well in in my book in chapter six. Uh, So we always talk to our patients about their adrenals and looking at cortisol. Cortisol is an important hormone when we think of weight management. Secondly, thyroid hormone levels. And then thirdly, our sex hormone levels, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So I can give an example of maybe a patient I've helped with each of those. Yeah. Go ahead and kind of describe them. Sure. So Some patients, considering even the current scenario we're all under, uh, have lots of stress in their life. And so they come to me wanting to lose weight, yet they haven't really examined how high their stress levels may be and some changes that need to be made in life. And I can usually tell when talking to a patient if they are, um, if their adrenaline is more soaring, (laughs) they're not sleeping well. They, they can't lose weight, but yet they're very, you know, rubbed up and they, they feel like they should be burning calories. They feel like they should be losing, losing weight, but they're not lo- losing weight because their cortisol is too high. And so in many, I see this very commonly, we will use saliva cortisol testing to, to assess and confirm what I'm already suspicioning, that cortisol patterns are either too high or too low. And when cortisol is too high, many times glucose is too high and patients' bodies are stressed and their body's going to hang on to those, those calories Um, hang on to the fat when patients are in that stressed state, that fight or flight state, which we can confirm on testing. So if that happens, then we need to to speak with our patients about ways to reduce stress. So deep breathing, uh, maybe not working out so aggressively, lessening the cardio, doing more yoga, meditation. And there are lots of supplements that exist to help um, help balance cortisol to bring levels down when they are too high. So high cortisol is something that I see really commonly that can contribute to inability to lose weight. Mm. Okay. So that's one piece is the, the cortisol levels. What's the other piece? So thyroid is also extremely important. So I tell patients to think of your thyroid hormone levels. um, Specifically when we break them down, Um, many patients come to me having had their TSH level tested only. And I think TSH stands for too slow to help. Because by the time TSH is abnormal, patients- Wait, what did you say T- TSH stands, like your pretend definition is? Yeah, yeah. one of my mentors growing up actually um, brought this up, so I can't claim it. But Joe Collins, one of my mentors who is a naturopath, he taught me that TSH can stand for too slow to help. Because by the time TSH levels are high, many times patients have suffered with low thyroid for years. So rather than just have TSH levels tested, because that's only part of the problem, free T4 and free T3 levels need to be tested and reverse T3 and thyroid antibodies. So with my patients, if I'm suspicioning they have low thyroid because of inability to lose weight or hair loss or cold intolerance or fatigue or memory fog, dry skin, whatnot, I'm going to run a full thyroid panel. So many of my patients 
come to me on thyroid medication, they're taking something like Synthroid or levothyroxine, which is only T4. And no one's ever told them, and their doctor may not even realize that they don't have T4 receptors in their body. They only have T3 receptors. So it's really important that that T4 gets converted over to our most important thyroid hormone, which is T3. In some patients, in the stressed patients, <laughs> that T4 can convert to reverse T3. And the way I like to describe this to patients is T3 is the gas pedal on your metabolism. You want that gas pedal on hard. Reverse T3 is your brake pedal. You don't want your brake pedal on. And when you're stressed, that brake pedal is going to be on, not the gas. <laughs> so patients then many times can't lose weight. So many patients can't convert the T4 to T3, and we can assess that on testing. And if that's what we find, yes, we need to work with stress reduction. But there are a lot of nutrients that exist that can help facilitate that conversion, like selenium is really important. Diet changes can help also. Um, I'm a big advocate for gluten-free eating because many of my patients have the autoimmune thyroid component. Um, and then also medications exist. So if patients are only on T4 and we can't get their T3 up, they need to take T3. So natural, more natural options exist. I use a lot of desiccated porcine in my practice. Thing, drugs like Nature Throid, um, NP Thyroid, WP, or even Armor, that will provide patients the T3 that they need. Not everybody needs it, but many patients do. Um, and there are also some synthetic options that exist, like leothyronine or cytomel, which is T3, not the T4. So it's really important that we check all thyroid hormone levels in, in our patients to help them have the best um, chance for- Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own, or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Yeah. So I personally, um, I had... I had weaned myself completely off thyroid medicine. Yeah. I had gotten completely off. And then my thyroid just still wasn't functioning at where I needed to. Um, unless I was doing extreme amounts of fasting when I did uh, extreme amounts of fasting. Um, but if I was just kind of doing a six hour eating window, or if I was like, for me, I had to eat an absolutely perfect, perfect diet. If I had, when I mean perfect for me, I would basically eat vegetables and meat and that's basically mm -hmm. it and fruit. That would be the three things that I could eat. I could not eat anything else. And then I could completely be probably off of all thyroid medicine if I did just those three, but it's hard to eat that perfect and be that perfect 100%. all the time, a hundred percent. So I'm on a very low, low dosage now because with fasting and everything, I don't need very much. Um, sure. But I actually, for me, the only thing that works is I now actually just switched from armor thyroid to WP thyroid. Yeah. Um, so I want you to talk about a little bit, what is the difference between armor thyroid and WP thyroid? And I will tell you, I don't know if it was the transition, but when I was transitioning from taking armor to WP thyroid, I did feel like it was the WP thyroid worked more, meaning sure. like I kind of felt it more, but for me personally, my biggest problem is my body does not convert, uh, yeah, yeah. T4 into T3 because I have a lot of constipation issues. Sure. So because I'm not moving my bowels, like I need to, um, on a regular basis that my teeth, I guess it just, cause that's where it converts is in the liver. Correct. Uh, yep. So some in the periphery, some in the liver. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So it just, because it's not, everything doesn't, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't work all the way. So for me it, and, and that, and since I've been taking T3, it's helping me not to be constipated. Yep. Yep. So T3 that, that everything. yeah. So for me, that would, that's the perfect balance to be on just a very low dosage of WP thyroid and T3 because I wasn't converting T4 to T3. So let's kind of expand on that because people really, these are, this is a very advanced audience because we talk about this a lot. So kind of try to get as deep as you can and really talk about um, like the ratio levels that you like to see and kind of talk about 
what is your optimum? So when they go get those tests, what are some of the scores that you're looking for that you're saying, this is, you want your, you know, your TSH to be this, your free T3 to be this, this is kind of optimal. Sure. So I want to go back and comment on um, what you first asked as far as what the difference is between armor and WP. So mm -hmm. they're, they actually are very similar. So d any desiccated thyroid product usually comes from a pig. It's desiccated porcine, right? So it's pig. So um, some patients don't want to take that because of religious preferences, you mm -hmm. know, certain beliefs. Um, but if you're okay taking it, I, I should say if you're not okay taking it, you can get T4, T3 compounded. So there are option, other options that exist. But if you're okay taking the desiccated porcine, um, then it's really a matter of brand preference. And some patients just feel better on certain brands over the other. Others, Armour is an older brand. And I think some doctors don't like it because it's older and they think it's more difficult to regulate whatnot. Um, it has more ingredients than WP. WP is the most pure desiccated option on the market. It has three ingredients. So um, if patients are worried about a medication having lactose in it or cornstarch or other fillers, they really need to read the package inserts and these, the ingredients really do vary based on brand and brand manufacturer. So it's important for the patient, if they're worried about that, when they pick up their medication from the pharmacy, to ask about any sort of fillers or other ingredients and to read the package insert to make sure they're comfortable with the ingredients. My top preference is WP. If we can obtain that for the patient, it's usually the best because it's the most pure. So there's a less likelihood of them reacting to <laughs> any of the other ingredients. And is there a natural version of um, just T3 only or is Cytomel? Yes, no, the there isn't. There, all the, right. so, and that's because when we're taking, well, we're, I'm not a pharmacist, but when the company, or I should say when the, the pharmacy is manufacturing that product, they're taking that full thyroid gland. So they're, they can't necessarily separate out the T4 and the T3. Like when you're taking that gland, you're getting a combination of both. Okay, patient, so that, that's what I, that's what I've heard too. Yeah, yeah, that there's only a synthetic version of the of T3, T3 they need. except for compounding. So if you do want the T3 compounded, which I offer many of my patients, some of my patients have wonderful T4s. They don't need any T4. Um, so I may comment on your other question here, as far as what labs to look for. What I do with my patients in, is I draw out a bell-shaped curve. And I have this plotted out in my, in my book also mapped out in chapter six. I draw a bell-shaped curve and I calculate the percentiles for each of their labs. So their T3 and their T4. And I tell them that I want them for the most part, if we can, functioning past the 50th percentile. Now, T3 wise, if they can tolerate it, I'd like to see them greater than the 75th percentile, even higher. If we can get the T3 above 3.5, between 3.5 and 4, that's kind of the sweet spot for T3. Many patients are very sensitive. Some patients can't tolerate that. They'll have, they'll have palpitations or anxiety or dizziness. So if they're sensitive, that may be too high of a range for them. But most patients do very well when we can crank that T3 up to the higher end of the reference range, the higher end of that bell-shaped curve. So if I need to use a sustained release T3 that, that's compounded for a, a sensitive patient who can't tolerate a really fast-acting like leothyronine or cytomel, we can do that. So let me let me stop you real quick because just for people who don't understand. So from what I understand, compounded thyroid medications use bioidentical thyroid hormones, and they they're synthesized in the laboratory from a non-animal for non-animal source. Is that correct? Correct, but I think you can get both. I think they can also compound. Um, using desiccated, if you like, if you wanted, if you wanted both T4 and T3. But if we we're only doing T3, then you're correct. More of a plant-based than an animal-based source. Okay. Which so, are biologically identical to the hormones that we're making. So they should bind to our receptors appropriately and cause good things to happen, not harm like some synthetics. <laughs> right, right. So if you had your choice for someone, would you say, you know, okay, I'd rather you go to a compounded pharmacy and get it from there? Or are you saying, I'm fine with you know, I'm having great success with people who are doing WP thyroid or armor and maybe T3. I use all of the above. It's very patient tailored. So pending their labs, if, if they come to me, they have low thyroid symptoms, their labs are suboptimal. I'm going to go for also what is a cheaper option for them, which would be like a WP nature armor. 
So I'm absolutely fine with those. It, I use, I reserve compounding for the complex cases. Compounding, it can be more expensive. And um, it, I don't use that as commonly. The commercially available medications work for the large majority of patients. Mm, okay, perfect. Um, and so let's talk about some numbers of what you like to see and some of the ratios that you know of that really make people. So like for me personally, I know that if for my TSH, if it has to be less than one for me to feel the best that I can feel. Um, so what have you seen in, in your patients? I would agree, and that's usually what I um, answer when I'm asked this question is, most patients feel better when TSH is less than one, and that's what the literature shows too. That applies most of the time, but since you said you have a more advanced audience, I'll, <laughs> I'll dive in a little bit deeper here. So TSH is inversely related to T4 and T3, right? So the lower TSH is, hypothetically, the higher T4 and T3 are. So if we can squash TSH below one, then we can assume T4 and T3 should be higher but that's not the case for everyone. So I don't want the audience to think, oh, as long as my TSH is less than one, I'm good to go. You may right. not be good to go. You still have to assess the T4 and the T3 and the thyroid antibodies and in many cases reverse T3. But generally speaking, that's a great rule of thumb to keep TSH less than one. That's where most patient, patients feel the best. Okay, now let's talk about um, like T3, free T3, free T4 and reverse T3 and reverse T4. Yeah, so I personally, uh, um, maybe you don't expect this coming because I'm talking about other numbers, but I don't fix it on the ratio. A lot of providers want a specific ratio um, when, you look at, when you look at free T3, reverse T3, and T4. What I'm going for with my patients is something visual. On that bell-shaped curve that I'm drawing out for them, they want, we want the T3 higher end and the reverse T3, which is the opposite of T3 lower end, right? So I want them to visually be able to see on that bell-shaped curve with me plotting their labs down that the, the good T3, <laughs> which is going to help their metabolism and their energy, is certainly higher than the reverse T3. We want that reverse T3 lower end. So I don't necessarily calculate a ratio. I just show them on the bell-shaped curve where they're sitting because we know that they should feel better with higher T3, lower reverse T3, as it will kind of block the effects of the T3. So why don't you explain to a little bit so people can kind of understand, because it is complicated, right? Like there's T3, free T3, reverse T3, then there's T4, reverse T4, and free T4, you know? So it's like, it can kind of get complicated. So can you break it down as simply as you possibly can for people to understand those and how they're different? I'll I can try to make it simple. <laughs> so think of TSH as a brain hormone. That's a pituitary hormone. So the TSH is going to tell our thyroid gland to spit out thyroid hormone. So when the TSH is really, really high, let's say you first have your level checked and your number comes at five or 10 or you know really high, that tells us your brain, your body is screaming for more thyroid hormone. It is unsatisfied. It is not happy. <laughs> we want that happy and calmed down less than one, right? So that's, that's the TSH. That's a brain hormone. That sends a signal to our, keeping it very simple, that sends a, sen a signal to the thyroid to produce thyroid hormone levels. T4, which stands for thyroxin, free thyroxin, should, in a perfect world, convert to free T3. If you're under a lot of stress, that's less likely to happen. And instead, the T4 can convert to reverse T3. Reverse T3 is not something that you want to, to be high because that's where fatigue, sluggishness, slugg sluggish bowels can happen. Um, patients- That's my problem. My reverse T3 is high. So there are various reasons that, that it can be high. Stress is one of the top um, reasons of of course. Um, but stress can mean all kinds of things. It could mean food sensitivities, which is not the case with you when you're eating very clean. <laughs> um, it could be psychologic stress. It could be stress from toxins. It could be stress from mold. I mean, so many things can, can cause that T4 to convert to reverse T3. Um, and I'd like to draw that out for my patients also. I'll literally write T4, that can convert to reverse T3, or we want to block that conversion and instead help T4 convert to free T3 selenium and zinc and omega-3 fatty acids um, are all essential for that conversion. 
if you think of T4 and T3 in general, those are made out of a tyrosine backbone, which is um, an amino acid, and then three or four iodine molecules. So you also need tyrosine and iodine to even make thyroid hormone levels. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a ton of cooking lately, and I've been having so many new recipes. Go to chantelrayway.com slash free recipes to get the best kale dressing recipe you'll ever have, the dairy-free artichoke dip that you will love for completely free. I also want to give you my entire free smoothie book that has the best smoothies. One of the things that can help you lose weight is just to replace one of your meals with an amazing smoothie. So if you're eating two meals, just make one of them a smoothie. You can get my free amazing recipe book at chantelrayway.com slash free recipe. And our protein shakes are amazing as well. And right now they're 30% off. Go to chantelrayway.com, click on store and use podcast for the 30% off your protein shake. If someone said that their reverse, like me, their reverse T3 is high, then would you suggest them taking some additional supplements of selenium, zinc, and iodine? So yes. So the short answer is yes. The longer answer is I would run a nutritional evaluation on them. Um, Mm -hmm. Many functional medicine labs offer these where we can look at their exact need because maybe I think they need zinc, but maybe I'm wrong, right? I could test their levels. Um, Genova Diagnostics, big functional medicine lab, they have a a 20 page nutritional analysis looking at vitamins, minerals, amino acids, antioxidants, and omegas. And that'll help me specify for my patients what they need for that conversion to to happen better. So in a perfect world, I would run that test to identify what nutritional needs they have. Got it. Awesome. Um, I think you did a really great job of, of simplifying that and making that easy to understand. Any other tips on thyroid that you could give people that, um, to make it easier for them to kind of understand what's their next step of what they need to do? Well, I think when we consider any of the endocrine system in general, we want to make sure that we're limiting our exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, because those can block, we'll say the the positive effects of thyroid hormones. (laughs) And fasting is one way to help your body detox from those chemicals, which I know you emphasize. Um, But I think um, just in general, choosing to eat clean, if we're avoiding dairy, which I'm I'm not a huge fan of dairy either, (laughs) dairy comes from cows, which have been injected with hormones, which are going to contain, you know, chemicals also um, that can just screw mess with our endocrine system. So if someone's looking to make some changes with their cortisol, their sex hormones, their thyroid, getting off gluten, getting off dairy, eating organic fasting, I mean, all of those, um, uh, changes can positively influence their, their hormone production. Mm, awesome. So now let's move to talking about the sex hormones that you talked about. So kind of map those out and what are some of the things that you're seeing in women that are having trouble losing weight, what are those, those numbers coming in at? Is there, are they having estrogen dominance? Is there uh, testosterone low? What's, what are you seeing on those people who are having trouble losing weight? So this is kind of my, my specialty. I, I just love optimizing sex hormones because patients feel better so much more quickly and they just get their quality of life back. So in all of my patients who come in to see me, um, if I'm suspicioning hormone imbalances, I'm going to run a comprehensive hormone test. Now that could vary based on if they're cycling, if they're menopausal, if they're having irregular cycles, whatnot. Um, because many times, yes, we see estrogen dominance or I suspicion it, but I want to find that on paper. So sadly, I too often see women go through menopause, they're having hot flashes and their doctor puts them on estrogen which was the wrong thing to do. I've had women come to see me, postmenopausal women come to see me who have estrogen levels two, three, 400, which are way too high. I mean, that's high for a cycling woman. And instead their progesterone levels are very low and that woman needed progesterone, not estrogen. So that doctor was trying to help, was trying to give her estrogen, but he never, he or she never checked levels to confirm if that was the need. And so the patient was mistreated. So I see this so commonly. We see estrogen dominance, not just in postmenopausal women. Um, they're actually less likely to have it than younger women. I see that in younger women all the time. So I have women with endometriosis and women with very heavy bleeding, fibroids and cysts, whatnot, come to see me. And I immediately, that clues me in that there may be a, a hormone imbalance happening. So I like to check estradiol levels and estrone. I check both estrogens. Too commonly, I've had patients come to see me who have only had estradiol levels tested and not estrone. You actually have three estrogens 
estradiol, estrone, and estriol. But estriol is, is really only going to be high if you're pregnant. It's, you're not going to find that on blood work. You can find it on a urine hormone test, but not on blood work. So it'd be wonderful if you could have your estradiol and estrone levels tested to see where those are in relationship to your progesterone. Progesterone is the most soothing, calming hormone. It's great for sleep, great for PMS. It's the first hormone that starts to go through perimenopause. So I have women in their 20s and 30s already progesterone deficient. They're already um, living with higher estrogen as compared to their progesterone, which that is setting them up for heavy bleeding, anxiety, sleep problems, potentially even a hysterectomy down the road if they can't get that bleeding under control. And with high estrogen, estrogen causes the growth of tissues. It causes the growth of breasts, the growth of the uterine lining, and it causes um, us to have our curves, right? Women have more fat around our hips, our bottom, our waist, um, which we want some curves, but we don't want to live in this estrogen dominant state if we're trying to lose weight. So it's really important to have estrogens um, comprehensively tested and progesterone tested and testosterone. There's a low testosterone epidemic right now, not just of men, but also of women. I have women in their 20s who come to see me with zero testosterone, like literally zero testosterone. <laughs> testosterone is really important for them to age well. It's important for bone density. It's important for memory preservation, for cardiovascular risk. It helps us feel good, helps with mood, motivation, drive, libido, and energy. But because it helps with muscle mass, that can translate into weight loss with our workouts. It can give us the strength and the energy to work out well, but the muscle mass to burn calories. So it's important, even for women, even women need to have ample levels of testosterone. And this can all be assessed on either blood, saliva, or urine testing. Well, I, I personally have started taking some progesterone cream and I'd love to hear your, I, I feel like I've heard people saying that progesterone therapy has really helped them balance insulin levels and yes. fluid retention. They've been able to improve their sleep and reduce inflammation and also help thyroid hum, uh, hormones function properly. So, yes. you know, for me, I know that I, and I don't know if it's psychological, but i when I do do, when I take progesterone cream, I feel like I eat less. So on the days that I take progesterone cream, sure. I absolutely feel like I eat less food. And I don't know if it's mental or can you talk about what is the, the science behind that? Yeah, um, I'll try to. I wanted to say so many things based on what you just said. <laughs> um, so I want to mention there is a relationship between estrogen dominance and low thyroid or low progesterone and low thyroid. So there, there definitely is a relationship there. You're like, there, you're at a greater likelihood of having thyroid challenges when you're estrogen dominant. And part mm -hmm. of that relationship is just, you have endocrine disruption, right? Which needs to, needs to be resolved. Um, but trying to remember your questions there, um, progesterone, you were probably, you were alluding to the fact that you feel better when you take progesterone. So for cycling women, we don't have them take progesterone every single day. Just like no. if you were taking you know, birth control, which I don't advocate for, um, you would be taking usually the birth control, that certain pills three weeks on and then take the week break off. So when I prescribe natural progesterone to a cycling woman, that also has to be cycled because we're trying to mimic normal hormone ryth rhythms. Right. So, so what days if the, yeah. would they take it if day one is the first day of their period? Yeah. So the very first day of heavy bleeding, not a little bit of spotting, but like your first day of heavy bleeding is day one of your cycle. In a perfect 28 day cycle, which nobody's, not everybody's perfect. Um, you would start the progesterone after ovulation, which is approximately day 14. So for many of my patients, they take their progesterone days 14 through 28 or through bleeding. So if they bleed on day 27, that becomes day one. So they have to stop the progesterone then. Some of my patients, especially if we're really optimizing like fertility, I don't want them taking progesterone too early. Um, so many of my patients who are really, really um, tailored in to their cycles, they'll start taking the progesterone um, peak day plus three. So if they know their cervical mucus has changed, they know they had their most fertile day based on their home ovulation test, if that's their peak day, they'll start progesterone three days later. Peak plus three is, is another way to, to say it. But um, most patients I'm prescribing the progesterone cycled days 14 through 28, specifically at night because it's calming and, it, and it's helpful for sleep. It mm -hmm. is a natural diuretic. So estrogen causes you to retain fluid. Too, ma too much estrogen can make you feel puffy. Progesterone is a natural diuretic, which helps you get rid of some of that. So let's talk about how to 
reverse estrogen dominance naturally. Um, obviously, there's some supplements. I know of one that I have taken is DIM. Yeah. The supplement DIM. Like, is that a supplement that you, again, you would do based on your period or would you suggest someone if they feel like they do have estrogen dominance, would they take that every day or would they yeah. balance that with their cycle as well? Uh, DIM can be taken every day. So my doctorate was actually on DIM. I, my doctorate's on estrogen metabolism. Really? Yeah, so, um, so I love DIM. So DIM, for those of you listening, um, I can never pronounce it, stands for diandolyl methane, <laughs> which is an extract from cruciferous vegetables. So we're talking broccoli, cauliflower, um, bok choy, kohlrabi, kale, not spinach, but the other, other greens. It's like eating six pounds of them per day. It's a very concentrated um, version of the, this, this indole molecule. So DIM can help your liver and your body better clear out excess estrogen. So in the absence of any hormone test, if a patient comes to me and says, hey, I have heavy bleeding, I have painful cycles, I have fibroids or cysts, or I have, um, if they had breast cancer, you know, significant family history of breast cancer, DIM is one of the best supplements that they could be taking. Even the National Cancer Institute, um, if you go to their website, speaks to the, the benefits that DIM can have. If you go to clinicaltrials.gov, there are clinical trials right now of breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, all different estrogen-related cancer patients using DIM as an adjunct to their, their treatment with standard treatment like chemotherapy, whatnot. But DIM has um, been shown in the literature to be very effective, specifically at clearing out excess estrogen through the body. What it does is it, it increases, I don't know if you want me to get into this, but it increases yeah. 2-hydroxyesterone, which is a protective um, estrogen metabolite and reduces the 16. Um, this, is, this is actually a ratio that you can um, have your provider test for, not in the blood, but on urine. Um, you can, uh, there are several different companies like Genova Diagnostics has a, a test or Precision Analytical has a dried urine test called the Dutch test, which is awesome. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one -on -one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is going to really take you to the next level. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. You can actually test your hormone levels plus your estrogen metabolites to see how your liver is clearing estrogen through the body. Because when we think of cancer risk, it's not the level of hormones that really um, increases the risk. It's how the body is metabolizing or excreting or detoxifying, whatever word you want to use, eliminating um, the estrogen once used. We want estrogen to bind to receptors and help with hot flashes or memory, whatnot. But everything we consume eventually has to be excreted from the body. We mm. don't want it hanging out and causing bad things. We want it to be cleared through the body and dim help support phase one estrogen detox in the body, improving this two to 16 ratio. And it mm. also helps keep testosterone levels higher, estrogen lower. So if I put a man or a woman on testosterone replacement therapy, usually my goal is to raise the testosterone, not the estrogen. <laughs> DIM is a weak aromatase inhibitor, meaning it will help hinder the testosterone from converting to estrogen, allowing that patient to receive the benefits of higher testosterone without it converting over to estrogen. So DIM is, DIM is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Now let's talk about some other supplements that you know of that are really good for estrogen dominance. I know milk thistle is another. I will tell you probably two years ago, and I haven't taken it since, and I don't know what it was, but I've, I've tried to take milk thistle two times in my life. And both times I got a rash all over my body, like covered. Sure. Um, and I was like itching and I'm like, what is going on? So you're detoxing. I mean, that's yeah. What it like. yeah. yeah. And I, I did it twice and then I did, I just said, okay, I'm not going to do this do it, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I stopped doing it. But do you think maybe I should um, try it again? Um, enter at your own risk. <laughs> um, but I, I think the reason why you're alluding to milk thistle helping clear out estrogen is milk thistle supports the liver specifically. So there are a lot of different kind of liver detox um, 
tinctures, teas, supplements. I, I use a lot of milk thistle, dandelion, beet, artichoke, um, different blends, even like cilantro, parsley. Those are all supportive foods slash like supplements you can take to help the liver clear out just toxins in general, like including excess estrogen. Mm -hmm. um, but probably, I don't know for sure, but who knows how long it would have lasted, but probably you were detoxing from something and that was manifesting on the skin. So mm -hmm. it, it, next time, if you try milk thistle, you could try either a lesser dosage or you could yeah. support your detox pathways even further. So maybe take some glutathione with that. Maybe take um, um, charcoal or fiber or bentonite clay, something to help bind the toxins that you're provoking your liver and your gallbladder to dump so that they can be bound and excreted rather than kind of like show up on your skin. <laughs> so they were trying to get out of the body and that's how they <laughs> manifested. But if you can support the liver and support the binding of those toxins so that you can eliminate them, you might be less likely to experience that rash. Awesome. I love it. Um, so I know that another thing that you help with is kind of some autoimmune issues. Um, <clears throat> I saw that on your website. So talk about some of the biggest things for autoimmune that you're seeing people coming in for and you're helping them kind of take it to the next level with their autoimmune issues. Sure. Um, so you mentioned I'm from Iowa, as is Dr. Terry Walls, who's a good, good friend and colleague, big advocate for helping patients with autoimmune diseases. And I spoke at her conference a couple summers ago on the relationship between your risk of autoimmune disease and suboptimal hormone levels. So one of the best things you can do to prevent autoimmune diseases and help them if you have them is get your hormones balanced. So back to what we've talked about today, thyroid and sex hormones are extremely protective um, when we think of autoimmune disease risk. But aside from optimizing hormones, as a functional medicine practitioner, I strongly believe autoimmune disease risk starts with poor gut health. So patients who are coming into me, if they have, speaking of rashes, if they have psoriasis or eczema or whatnot, um, we're going to run food sensitivity testing on them to see which foods they do need to take out of their diet. Because maybe it is gluten, dairy, soy is a top common finding. Corn, yeast is very common that we find. Um, maybe it's coffee or maybe nuts and seeds are, are, are causing inflammation for that patient. And we want to find that. So we run food sensitivity testing. And then I run a comprehensive stool test as well on those patients, looking at their digestion and absorption, looking at their microbiome, see if they have um, enough good bacteria and to see if they have infections. So we, we very much look at gut health. We also look at nutritional deficiencies. I had mentioned that nutritional analysis earlier. Uh, that's something that is wonderful for, for my patients um, in that boat. And then also we look to see if they are toxin laden, which many of us are. We have accumulated toxins through our whole life and toxins can increase that the risk of autoimmune disease. So I help support patients detoxing, like kind of what we were just mentioning as well. And we, we actually can run a test if I'm suspicious, like living in Iowa, I have a lot of farmers for patients. So if I'm suspicious that they are um, have very high levels of herbicides and pesticides, things like glyphosate, which is Roundup, we can test for that. I can test to see if they have those high levels and then help support them detoxing through using an infrared sauna or the supplements we mentioned, whatnot, um, to help them get rid, of, get rid of those toxins. So give us a little bit of a sneak peek of your new book, your longevity blueprint. Like give us your, maybe either your top three tips of what you talk about in that book. Give us a little tasting for it. Sure. So I wrote the book to help patients um, kind of gain insight into how they should be maintaining their body to prevent chronic disease risk, risk to improve their longevity. With our home, we know we need to maintain the lawn. We need to change the furnace filters, keep hair out of the drains. They're just things that we're doing on a daily basis to help our home last a long time, but we don't always know what to do for our body. So through the book, what I'm doing is I'm comparing different um, organ systems in our body to different avenues or areas of our home. <laughs> um, instructing the patient on what testing options are available for them to address that specific organ system in the body or aka room in the house. So for instance, chapter six of the book is all about the um, heating and cooling system of the home, which I compare to the endocrine system in the body, which we've discussed a lot about today. Chapter one is all about the foundation of the home because you have to have a strong foundation to build a, ha a house. And similarly in the body, you have to have a strong gut. I, I, in my analogy in the book, the gut is the foundation of your health. So um, to give you a sneak peek, I would just say that, um, it's very comprehensive. It's a 350 page book where I'm going through various organ systems in the body, helping you as the reader 
maybe tap into one organ system that you know you need to work on the most, whether it's your plumbing. Let's talk about the liver. Let's talk about the liver real quick. So give us, give us some tips that you give in your book to help with the liver. So first patients have to kind of examine what their current toxic burden is. Um, I know a lot of patients right now because of them being under quarantine right now are at home and they may not be opening their windows. An easy thing that you can do to reduce your toxin exposure, well, is leave your shoes at the door. Not Don't bring in your nasty shoes and walk all over your home carrying all the <laughs> toxins from the day, but open your windows and get good airflow. When, when we think of um, just reducing our risk to toxins, many times our homes are full of more toxins than we get when we're outside. So opening up our windows right now, just getting fresh air is a good start. Uh, cleaning up our personal care products to not use anything with fragrance, parabens, phthalates, sulfates, those all can bind to your, um, uh, we'll just say like estrogen receptors. Those can cause what we call endocrine disruption, which can screw with your thyroid and sex hormones. So choosing safe personal care products is important for detoxing. Cleaning up your diet is extremely important as well. Eating organic. Uh, if you go to the environmental working group, they have a, a list of the dirty dozen, the foods that you want to make sure you're buying organic that are more thin skin that pesticides can penetrate into. Um, and even fasting for patients who can, can do fasting. I think that's an awesome option. Also, when your body gets in that state, it's finally able to release toxins. Like we don't need to eat constantly. We need to take a break from eating <laughs> and allow our body to clean up <laughs> um, and allow our body to do what it, it knows how to do. So even fasting can be a beneficial tool as well for detox. Awesome. Well, Stephanie, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yeah, so you can find my book anywhere books are sold, um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, also on our website, yourlongevityblueprint.com. And we're offering a 10% off discount if you use the code RAY, uh, just R-A-Y. So you <laughs> can visit that website. I have videos and blogs there. My clinic website, uh, my clinic is the Integrative Health and Hormone Clinic. So that website is ihhclinic.com. And then you can find links to all my social media handles on those websites. Awesome. Well, you are just so smart. I love talking to people. I can tell instantly like how knowledgeable they are and just, I've really enjoyed my time with you. I feel like you just are brilliant. So it's been really nice having you on the show. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And you guys stay tuned because we have another episode coming up in just a minute.